So the key to this is if we want to be very concrete, we should probably focus on actions. And I'll mm-hmm. use fitness as an example because it translates to everybody, whereas you know, people's circumstances sure. differ. Let's say somebody really wants to take on a fitness routine. They hate running or they want to lose weight in a, in a healthy way, this kind of thing. So we've all heard the example, well, you put your shoes by the door on day one, day two, you put them on, day three, you go out the door, day four, you walk around the block and then, you know, and then eventually like they're running marathons. Okay, (laughs) great, but to sustain that behavior or even to make the, the behavior pleasurable and to give you energy, the key is to subjectively reward those steps. So it's not gonna be, let's say I go out and I run a mile and my goal is to run 10 miles in a few weeks. The key is, as you're in the strain of that mile, the hard part, you wanna tell yourself, this is the good part. This is the part that gives me energy. And I'll be very surprised if people don't actually feel like they could continue further. So it's a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single, is made up of you know single steps, but the key is to reward the harder steps, not the easier ones and not the ones where you get the thing that you want. Don't reward yourself for putting your shoes on and taking a step outside. You could if that was a huge barrier for you. It was very hard. If it was very hard for you. But running the 10 miles that's is hard. Right. Find the wall and push a little bit further through that wall and reward that process. So this is why I think reps in the gym, the, the final reps, like reps to failure, are usually not the best example. First of all, most people aren't doing reps to failure and it doesn't Mm -hmm. translate to young kids and stuff where they probably shouldn't be doing heavy reps to failure, this kind of thing. What you want, however, is if you're gonna go there to think about these are the, this is the hard part because that's when adrenaline, norepinephrine are getting maxed out and that's when you have an opportunity to bring dopamine in and teach those neural pathways to slam that back down. And I don't wanna um, highlight them too much because they are a very niche and specialized community, but you look at people in special operations, you look at the, um, process like the whole um, evaluation process of who gets in and who doesn't. It's really about putting people into stress and seeing who can not just make it through that stress, but buffer that stress. Reward the process through teamwork, reward the process of stress through some internal dialogue that has everything to do with not being back on your heels, not being flat footed, but center of mass forward. And I should also be clear, I'm not talking about everybody being super aggro and always like, you know, <gasps> work, work, work. Yeah. It, in fact, if you're spending too much epinephrine, if you're too much of an adrenaline junkie, you will burn out eventually, unless you can find ways to recover yourself or to buffer that with dopamine. And the recovery process is especially important. There's a second reward system. So you've got the dopamine system, and I guess to really put a box around it, the subjective reward needs to be done at the hardest portion of a process. The tough conversation with a significant other it's like when it's really tough and you want, you just, it, that's when you want to start telling yourself, this is the, this is the good part because I'm not speaking or this is the good part because, <laughs> I'm not because reacting. right, I'm not reacting or this is the good part because I'm probably not doing it correctly, but I'm on the right path, right? Um, they're upset. They're not feeling your empathy, you know, this kind of thing, or you're not really understanding what's going on. You're getting frustrated. But if you tell yourself, this is this is the neural pathway getting ground in there like really dialed in so that the the next time this i'm going to breeze right past this that's really how the process works because dope remember no one comes along and drips dopamine in your ear even if you get a billion dollars or you win a nobel prize or you win the presidency it's all internal Hmm. these neurochemicals are all internal and while some of them are designed to be released in response to things very reflexively like um, you know, food, sex, sleep, you know, all these things will trigger these neurochemicals. We have this big forebrain which allows us to place subjective context on things. How do you do it then? How so, do you bring dopamine in your brain subjectively through daily conversation with yourself? So um, there's a process I'm going through right now where I'm, I'm trying to write a book and um, it's hard. And it's hard. And I was told that the harder it is, the better I'm probably doing it. And I was like, great. And my editor's ready to kill me and because yeah, I'm yeah, slow yeah. and I and I know and I'm a very slow person. I, yeah. I, I drive people crazy. I'm like glacially slow because science is slow and yeah. I like to get things right. You wanna rush it. Yeah. I like to get things right, but I'm very proud of the fact that everything we've published, I can stand behind. It was the best we could do with the tools at the time. And I just know that when I look back on a writing career or a scientific career, I want to be able to say, you know, every journal we put it in was rock solid. Everything was rock solid. Mm-hmm. We had fun doing it, the relationship. So I go slow. Yeah. But as a consequence, what I'm finding is 
there are a lot of interferences these days. I'm, I'm, I think social media is great. I teach neuroscience on social media because I think it's important to do public education. But it's a distraction too. But it's incredible. And it's, it's incredible how much time and energy it can take. So what I've started doing now is I turn off my phone and I lock it in a safe. <laughs> And I experience extreme anxiety. Right? It's so weird. Why is that? Is it because uh, it gives you so much dopamine that when you're not having it? Well, this is scary because I actually think, um, brief anecdote, on the weekend I was driving, there's a kid that I mentor, and I picked up my phone and I was texting while I was driving. And he said to me, this was really embarrassing for me, he said, you know, I, I wish you wouldn't text while you drive. And I put it and I put it down and I realized, this is crazy. I know that I, that my life and his life is far more important and the lives of the people around me are far more important than any text message, which means I wasn't th doing it rationally. It's just pure reflex at this point. So I, I don't think I pick up the phone because I don't even know what I'm looking for there anymore. It's just become reflexive. Wow. 